Welcome back to the show. Hey, fall is here. Did you know? In addition to pumpkin, pumpkin spiced everything, fall is a time to try out some new wines here with the quintessential wines for fall. The wine diva, our mistress of Merlot. Please welcome Leslie Miller from Amuse Wine. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Jason. How look are at, you? Look, look at that beautiful display you have there. You have is that corn? Is that corn and tomato? Look at your fall harvest. Did you just go pick that from outside in your garden? I did. My little North Loop garden. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. I haven't seen that garden. I live right by you. I don't know. You got to tell me where that is sometime. Yes, I have some wonderful fall veg um, that I want to talk about because I've been getting so many emails about what to pair to literally these items on the table today. Well, I was going to say, and and everyone wants to pair stuff with pumpkin, which we will get to. That's probably the, the biggest thing. But where are we starting today? We're going to start with squash, um, apples, and also kind of things like rutabagas or parsnips, things like that. But everybody, I mean, I just walked into, you know, the grocery store here in my neighborhood, and there's squash everywhere. And there's so many squash recipes popping up. I love the grape Pinot Gris. This grape is also Pinot Grigio in Italy. But Pinot Gris, as you take it out of Italy, it becomes a little bit rounder in places like Slovenia, Alsace, France, or even Oregon. You get more of these really beautiful kind of apricot uh, pear and apple notes that I think go really, really beautiful with something like baked squash. What's it called again, Leslie? So Pinot Gris. Uh, G-R-I-S is just the grape. So if you find a Pinot Gris, something from Oregon, or if you even find it from Alsace, France, um, Pinot Gris is perfect. It's a medium weighted white wine that will go with all of these really great flavors. Okay, so not too, so you said medium, right? It's medium bodied, but it's 100% dry. Okay. So we're really actually kind of snuggle up to some of those like rounder flavors of those, of that veggie and fruit family. Okay, let's move on. Uh, by the way, that is perhaps the biggest stem I've ever seen on a pumpkin in my <laughs> life. I'm I, I'm really worried it's actually going to poke you uh, in your uh, poke you on your chin or something. <laughs> it is. I think that they're doing. I think it's kind of artsy these days that they're picking these with a longer stem. Remember when we were kids, the stem was like to here. Yeah, and now <laughs> yeah. look at that. <laughs> All right, so pumpkin. Everybody's pumpkin everything. You know, pumpkin everything. Pumpkin rolls are in the grocery store. Uh, pumpkin pie is coming up on our tables as well. I know that you're going to be like, oh, okay, here we go again. But dry Riesling is the answer. Absolutely the answer to everything. Pumpkin and spice and everything nice. Really? Okay, now, Leslie, you know what yes. I'm going to say. You yes. know what I'm going to say. I do. You're going to say, wait a minute. I thought that all Rieslings were sweet, Les. Yes, and I'm thinking <laughs> sweet on sweet equals really not sweet. good. Yeah, so a dry Riesling, this one is actually from Australia, and it's a great little family winery, Jim Ferry. Um, but you pick up a dry Riesling. If you're confused about where to find a dry Riesling, always go to the Austrian section. This is Australia, but if you go to the Austrian section, it just says Riesling, it has to be dry on the label and um, those really nice kind of honey flavors. Again, I say honey from the notes, but in fact, the wine is dry and that paired up to the pumpkin is pretty unbelievable. Okay, so literally, cause I'm always trying to think of the viewer who isn't um, wine smart like you, you, can you literally go into the shop and go, yo, Becky, take me to Austria. I mean, literally yeah. you just ask for the Austrian section. Yes, so some stores have, them, have their wine set up by grape or they have them set up by style or literally region. So okay. if you said, Becky, take me to the Austrian section and you just saw Riesling and it didn't, it didn't denote that it was going to be a dessert style, then you are going to always have a dry Riesling. So a really good little tip for people who want to try that grape on again. Okay. So anything pumpkin, a dry Riesling, not the traditional Riesling, because it'll be That's too right. sweet. And then you're going to email us and then, and then I'll have to buy that bottle from you. So yeah. Okay, so stay right there, Leslie. Be careful of that stem. I don't want you getting hurt in the commercial break. Be very <laughs> careful. We have okay. more wines, more fall treats, more with Leslie when we return. Back after this. <laughs> that big old stem. Keep an eye on her in the break.
Welcome back, everyone. Let's check in with Leslie and make sure she hasn't poked her eye out with that big stem. Leslie, are you there? I'm here. I have both of my eyes. Perfect. Uh, we are talking fall wines with Leslie Miller from Amuse Wine. Okay, we stopped at the pumpkin and yes. the, the extra dry Riesling. Where are we going to next? Well, tomatoes, I know that we're, you know, still finishing up some of those late summer tomatoes. If you've made those great chunky tomato sauces or salsas, you need the grape Sangiovese, which primarily resides in the region Chianti, which is in Italy. So Sangiovese, these great red fruited flavors, a little touch of the spice and tomatoes, they're BFS until the end of time. I'm hearing from young Kendall that this is her favorite. Sangiovese? Yes. Oh, I love it. It's I, so good. Wait, how do I say it? Sangiovese. Sangiovese? Yeah. I sound like Land Shark. I'm just letting that drift off at the end. Sangiovese. <laughs> I'll just ask Becky to take me to the Sangio whatever section. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have what what we have corn. We're we moving to corn. Yeah, we're going to corn because, you know, we're we're eating a lot of corn now as as Midwesterners. And you know what? Really quintessential Chardonnay and corn. The bomb.com. It really is such a great little pairing, especially if you love to lather up your corn like I do. With yeah. Lots of salt. So, so good. Okay. So that's Let me ask you this because I think the majority of folks watching, if they mm -hmm. go to a restaurant or if they are, you know, they get kind of stuck with a wine and they're like, oh, I don't know what to say, they're probably going to say Chardonnay if they do a white. I've, I don't think I've asked you this in a while. What is, give me two of your favorite Chardonnay, give the folks, Two of your favorite Chardonnays. So right now, I cannot stop drinking Melville. That's what this winery is here. Central Coast, California is one of the most beautiful growing regions for cool climate Chardonnay. So take a look at the Central Coast. Um, this is Santa Barbara County, Melville, amazing little winery. But they're not as big and wooded as what you would expect. And so they're a little bit cleaner and leaner. I also love South Africa. So South Africa makes some really stellar Chardonnay. And I think a lot of times we always just go for their reds, um, but they make some great on oak Chardonnays for people to try. Like $12, $15 too, really nice price points. Okay, Leslie, you know what I'm gonna say. Anytime you say oak Chardonnay, I think of Moria Rose. I'm just waiting for you to talk about fruit wines. Yeah. Well, I always think of Paula Deen. I always say Paula Deen, two sticks of butter. Exactly. Right? Because everybody thinks of the movie theater butter style, you know, popcorn wine when it comes to Chardonnay, but not so. That really only is from the barrel. Paula Dean loves her booter and oil. Okay, one more one more thing. Uh, yeah. you, your industry made news over the weekend. There was a court ruling that said that Minnesota winemakers can now use grapes from other regions. What does this mean and how will this affect Minnesota wines? And is this a good thing? Actually, Jason, I think it's a shame. Uh, I think that we, this is our bread and butter. Um, this is literally um, who we are. This is the heart and soul of who we are as Minnesota grapes. Um, I've been an educator for Minnesota wine and a spokesperson for the state for over a decade, teaching people, you know, different grapes and whatnot. I actually think that this is going to leak into other agricultural areas in the state of Minnesota. Uh, I think it's a shame because you would never walk into the region of Burgundy, France, that only grows Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and say, hey, can I get a Cabernet from Bordeaux? Um, I think we should be proud of what we're growing here. I understand that we live in a challenging climate, but so does the rest of the world. And I think, to be honest, I know this is going to be sound controversial, but I think it's greedy. Um, I think that we do a lot here in the Minnesota, uh, you know, horticultural department. The U has done so much work to produce Minnesota grapes here. And I don't think that it's really right for you to be able to walk into a Minnesota winery and say, I'll take Cabernet, Merlot, a Chardonnay, when we do beautiful things in the agricultural fields here. I'm glad you're blunt. I want you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I want you to be blunt. I, you know, I, I want good things for the Minnesota winemakers. They're good people. And yeah. yeah, that's that's why I asked you. I knew you wouldn't hold back. <laughs> I feel strong. I feel strong about Minnesota. <laughs> okay, Leslie, can you put that pumpkin on the floor? I, I, it's just scaring me. I just can't stop watching. I don't want you to get it's, hurt. It's camouflaged in here. <laughs> it is. That is, is that a cam? Oh, it is. That is a very nice jacket there, Leslie Miller. Thank you. You know, it's got a little Michael Jackson, you know, with my camouflage. Camo's in, in season again. It is. And so are big shoulders. I heard that. 
from the New York Times. Giant Crystal Carrington shoulders are in. Yes, my shoulder pad sweaters, I can finally bring them back. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to wear mine. <laughs> Give it up for Leslie, everybody. For more information, head to her website, amusewine.com. And speaking of the internet, coming up, we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag when we return. Back after this.